Hello everyone, welcome you all to our YouTube channel Kempak Salava and today we are going to do a new part of industrial chemistry that is production of caustic soda. Basically, there are three types of cells that can be used to produce sodium hydroxide or caustic soda. Mercury cell, diaphragm cell and membrane cell. Earlier, production of sodium hydroxide was based on mercury cell. However, now it is not used to produce sodium hydroxide because it has a possibility to release mercury to the environment as well as contamination of sodium hydroxide with mercury. Basis of both diaphragm and membrane cells are almost identical. The major difference of membrane cell is having a membrane that is permeable only to sodium plus ions and the anode and the cathode are separated by above mentioned membrane. With the consideration of purity of the sodium hydroxide, lesser cons consumption of electricity and the minimal impact on the environment now the production of sodium hydroxide is done mostly by using membrane cell so in this video we are going to talk about membrane cell process first of all let me introduce raw materials used to produce sodium hydroxide. There are two raw materials we are basically used that is brine solution and water. Actually brine solution is a concentrated sodium chloride solution and the brine solution that is used in this membrane cell process should be very pure. Presence of magnesium 2 plus, calcium 2 plus and sulfate ions in the brine hinders the production process. So, first of all, we have to remove those mentioned anions and cations. I have already told you purification of brine solution is a very important part of the production of sodium hydroxide process. Reason for that is lowering of the purity of caustic soda because of the addition of these ions to the sodium hydroxide solution. Therefore, the concentration of these ionic impurities in brine solution that is used for the production should be at a very low level. Sodium chloride or salt extracted from seawater contains magnesium 2 plus, calcium 2 plus and sulfate ions. Hence, chemical treatments to remove impurity ions in brine prepared by this salt is a very important step. Sulfate ions can be precipitated and removed as barium sulfate by adding barium chloride in adequate quantities. Magnesium 2 plus and calcium 2 plus ions can be precipitated as magnesium hydroxide and calcium carbonate by adding sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate solution. Okay, now let us see balanced chemical equations of the above mentioned reactions. I have already told you we are using sodium hydroxide, sodium carbonate as well as barium chloride solutions for the precipitation of magnesium 2 plus, calcium 2 plus and sulfate ions. When we adding sodium hydroxide solution to the magnesium 2 plus solution then it will form sodium plus ions and 
magnesium hydroxide precipitate. When we are treated calcium 2 plus ions with sodium carbonate solution, it will form again sodium plus ions and a precipitate that is called as calcium carbonate. And when we are using barium chloride for the sulfate solution, then it will form chloride ions and a barium sulfate precipitate. We can easily remove those three precipitate from the solution. Now we have only sodium plus ions and chloride ions. But it will not be a problem because already I have told you we are using brine solution and the brine solution is a concentrated sodium chloride solution. Then you can understand brine solution has sodium plus uh, sodium plus ions as well as chloride ions so in this according to these equations also now we are having only sodium plus ions and chloride ions so we can now move on to the next step the membrane cell consists of anode chamber and a cathode chamber these two chambers are separated by a selective membrane. This membrane only allows sodium plus cations to pass between two chambers. Anode chamber consists of titanium anode and this is called as the positive terminal. And the cathode chamber consists of nickel cathode and this is called as the negative terminal. At the beginning, the anode chamber filled with the brine solution and cathode chamber filled with water. Then anode chamber mainly consists of sodium plus ions and chloride ions. Also it consists of very small amounts of H plus ions and hydroxide ions. Those are formed by dissociation of water. The possibility of oxidation of hydroxide ions is possible when consider about the standard electrode potentials. Because standard electrode potential required to oxidize hydroxide ions to give oxygen gas is 0.4 volts. Whereas the standard electrode potential required to oxidize chloride ions to form chlorine gas is about 1.36 volts but sodium chloride concentration is higher in the anode chamber this results a high concentration of chloride ions thus in the anode chlorine gas will liberate instead of oxygen gas with the electrolysis, chloride ion concentration decreases and there is a chance for oxidation of hydroxide ions and liberate oxygen gas. To prevent this reaction, a concentrated salt solution is continuously pumped into the anodic chamber and also used brine solution has to be removed continuously. Though the chloride ion concentration in the system decreases, sodium plus ion concentration of the anodic chamber does not decrease. So, to maintain the electric neutrality of the system, when chloride ions are given off from the anodic chamber as chlorine gas, another negative ion should come into the anodic chamber or sodium plus ions should migrate into the cathodic chamber solution. Here what happened is sodium plus ions migrate to the cathodic chamber. In the cathodic chamber we know reduction will happen. At the beginning there are no sodium plus ions in the cathodic chamber. It has only 
H plus ions and hydroxide ions resulted from dissociation of water molecules. Then, H plus ions in the cathodic chamber produces and liberate hydrogen gas. Then the hydroxide concentration in this chamber increases and then with the sodium plus ions, it will form sodium hydroxide. Then we can take sodium hydroxide solution out from the out from this chamber and the purity of it is 32% by weight to weight ratio. Now I am going to show you balanced chemical equations of the anodic reaction, cathodic reaction and the overall reaction. What will happen in the anode or the positive terminal is chloride ions will oxidize to the chlorine gas and in the cathode or negative terminal water will form hydroxide ions and hydrogen gas and when we are writing overall reaction you have to write 2 sodium chloride that is in the aqueous form and 1 H2O that is in liquid form will produce 2 sodium hydroxide in aqueous form and 1 chlorine gas and 1 hydrogen gas. Okay, now I am going to discuss the uses of sodium hydroxide. We can use sodium hydroxide for the production of soap and the production of paper, artificial silk and dyes. And also we can use sodium hydroxide as a strong base and you are using sodium hydroxide frequently uh, in your laboratories. And also sodium hydroxide can be used to precipitate heavy metals as they are hydroxides in wastewater treatment. We already discussed that uh, chlorine is one of the byproducts of membrane process. And let me introduce the uses of chlorine. Actually, we can use chlorine for bleaching purposes, such as bleaching textiles, woods, and paper pipes. And also, we can use chlorine for purifying drinking water. Uh, in Sri Lanka, you all know, uh, drinking water is purified uh, by using chlorine. And also, we can use chlorine for the production of hydrochloric acid. And production of chlorinated rubber, insecticides, dyes and medicine also a one of the uses of chlorine. And also, we can use chlorine for the production of vinyl chloride required to produce polymers like polyvinyl chloride or PVC. The other byproduct of the membrane process is hydrogen and the uses of hydrogen are manufacture of hydrochloride, production of ammonia, production of margarine by hydrogenation of vegetable oil and also hydrogen is used as a fuel. Now I am going to summarize the membrane process using a flow chart. First of all, we have to take the brine solution and it is not a pure solution. It has calcium 2 plus, magnesium 2 plus and sulfate ions. To remove those ions, we are adding barium chloride, sodium carbonate and sodium hydroxide solution. Then we can get a purified brine solution. At this stage, we can remove barium sulfate, calcium carbonate and magnesium hydroxide as a precipitate. Then the purified brine solution is added to the anode. In the membrane cell, we have an anode and also a cathode. The cathode is filled with water. Moreover, Sodium plus ions generated at the anode will migrate to the cathode. 
and also at the anode chlorine gas liberate at the cathode hydrogen gas will liberate moreover at the anode used brine solution has to be removed in the cathode sodium hydroxide solution will form and the purity of sodium hydroxide solution is 32 percentage by weight to weight ratio we can use the sodium hydroxide solution for the soap preparation then by vaporization of sodium hydroxide solution we can get sodium hydroxide solution with 99 percentage of purity This is the end of the production of caustic soda using membrane process and thank you for watching our Kim Taksalava video. If you are interested in our videos, please subscribe on us.